Well, the Baltimore Orioles showed some signs last year that they were a team on the rise. This year, they've done even better, and just this past week took two out of three head-to-head -head against the Rays. But this is their record in the AL East, break even, and against everybody else, 18 and 7. As opposed to 19 games against the other four teams in your own division now, you play 14. So that's 20 less against quality competition if you're in the American League East. What does the schedule have to do with where the Orioles stand now? Well, I think it's why you can't look at past year's models and try to predict where the wild cards are going to come from. It's a break for the strong divisions like the AL East because you're not beating up on each other. It's entirely possible that they all could finish with winning records. So, um, Correct. yeah, I think the difference to me, Dan, is down the stretch, I think, is when it's going to show up. I was looking at the Yankees' schedule. They're finishing with the Pirates, the Diamondbacks, the Royals, where the Red Sox finished with 19 of their 25 inside the division, which you could say is kind of good because you're playing the teams ahead of you. So if you're trying to catch somebody, you can play them head to head. But I must rather have the Yankees schedule go outside my division at the end and just beat up on other people. God, you know, I didn't think about it from that standpoint, Tom, because I was looking at it like in the American League East will pull up this board, how many teams are left trying to track the Rays down. I just looked at there's less head-to-head -head matchups. I never even factored in the fact that if you're playing the belly of the Central Division, right now the Central Division doesn't look very good, you may have a more competitive advantage. But once this weekend ends, the Yankees only have six more games left to catch the Rays. I think three in July. And so the head-to-head -head matchups has an effect with them because you can pick up two, two games in one day. That's not going to be possible this year. Tom, you and I are going to be in St. Louis next week for a showcase game. Things are not going well in St. Louis where fans have every right to expect a competitive team because that's the way it's been year in and year out. Without delving into the reasons, there's an old baseball cliche. You can't win a pennant in April or early May, but you can lose it. People might say, well, the Central Division isn't all that great, although the Brewers with that pitching are pretty damn strong. But the Cardinals right now are 13 and 25. To get to 90 wins, which should get them, even if they don't win the division, a wild card spot, they'd have to go 77 and 45. That's 620 ball, good enough to win the pennant in most years. Yeah, and that means they've lost any kind of margin for error. They, every team is going to go through some period of the season where they play 500 or worse sometimes over a few weeks. They can't do that anymore. They, they lost that margin of error, so that you're right. They have to play at an incredible clip. I look at 86, going back to last year. Mm -hmm. 86 would get you into the postseason. Maybe it's the sixth wild card, like for the Phillies last year. It's going to be tough for them to get there. They can do it. I, I think they're clearly, to me, underachieving. So there's more in the tank there. But the urgency right now, Dan, is on the St. Louis Cardinals. They can no longer say it's early. Yeah, I think they've made some very uncardinal-like decision-making, and I think it's affected the culture of their club.